Good morning, everybody. It's Friday again. I think I might start doing a video every Friday, even if I got nothing to talk about. It's just like a little Friday rant. So anyway, Trump uh, was apparently removed from Twitter, um, and all the uh, all the snowflakes are uh, celebrating communism and. Uh, censorship today <laughs> you know it just never ceases to amaze me all they talk about is impeachment which is a constitutional thing and then the minute they get a, a chance they they talk about censorship and, and and they love censorship but you know but if you ask them about censorship they'll say no 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 they, they don't like censorship but I don't know people are fucking stupid apparently uh, a Twitter employee on their last day of work, uh, disabled uh, President Trump's account for like 11 minutes or something. And I guess Trump kind of got pissed, but I understand that because I've been pissed with uh, social media, you know, specifically YouTube and other social media, although I've never been banned or anything from Facebook. I, I know friends that have. Uh, gotten some kind of Facebook probation or some kind of thing like that for uh, for saying just for posting whatever you know so there is no freedom of speech in um, social media you know it's their company they can do what they want to do with it so but I was just laughing this morning because I thought that was pretty funny that uh, all the snowflakes I, I, I mean I you know, I look at Trump's Twitter feed, and I sometimes I scroll through the comments, and I can't believe the hatred out there for you know for this is a United States president, guys. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not necessarily a fan of Trump either. Um, I don't know, Paul. I I, I love, like to think of myself as a true independent, although I do. I find myself, the older I get, I find myself agreeing more with the libertarian side of things. Not everything, but uh, I guess that, that's probably the closest to any party that I come. But you know, I like to be an independent because I, I like to form my own opinions. So, and, and I wouldn't want to, like if I ever were to run for office, I wouldn't want to hold office as a party one way or the other because that's just, you know, you want to you want proof of how things don't get done. Watch Congress, you know, watch some C-SPAN, watch Congress, what they do. They get nothing done every single day. Because it doesn't matter to them. Because if their party doesn't agree with it, that's just the way it is. So, <clears throat> anyhow. Um, interesting today, I heard first thing this morning on the radio about... I get up early, so I, I'm out like 5 a.m. And uh, I heard on the radio this morning that uh, the Michigan State Police are starting a new program where they are going to have roadblocks and ask to swab your mouth to see if you are under the influence of any drugs. Now this is interesting to me because Michigan is not a state that uh, that does DUI roadblock DUI checks. Um, I've never seen one in my entire life, although I, I don't know whether they've ever done them or not. I have never heard of a DUI checkpoint in Michigan. I know that in the southern states you see it a lot. Um, Florida is uh, notorious for that. Um, as a lot of you may know, these DUI checkpoints are unconstitutional. It's been proven in a court of law that they're unconstitutional. So if you are stopped at a DUI checkpoint, you don't have to say anything to them. Because everything that's going to come out of your mouth is going to incriminate you. So if, you, uh, if you're a clean dude and you want to fuck with the cops... At a DUI checkpoint, just don't say anything to them because you have the right to remain silent regardless. And they'll eventually, they'll usually just let you go, but they, they're probably going to hassle you. So, you know, so you'll probably be hung up there for an hour while they hassle you, and then you'll be let go because it, it's been proven uh, it's unconstitutional. What's interesting about this for me in the state of Michigan is that, for one, Michigan's never done uh, any type of DUI checkpoint. And two, um, they're saying that, uh, if you refuse to do the mouth swab 
it's going to be considered a civil infraction. Now, you know, under Michigan, Michigan has some of the strictest drunk driving laws in the country. We have a law on the books which is known as implied consent, which means if an officer asks you to take a breathalyzer, just by having a, a driver's license, you, you've you implied your consent. So what that means is that if you refuse that breathalyzer in the state of Michigan, your driver's license, you'll be charged with a misdemeanor, and your driver's license is automatically suspended for a one-year period. And there's nothing you can do about it. Um, as far as that goes, here in Michigan, the Secretary of State, which in other parts of the country is the DMV, um, the Secretary of State's office takes care of all the driver's license stuff, so the judges that you go in front of in circuit court or uh, district court, um, they have nothing to do with your driver's license anymore. So the consequences are what they are, and you have to deal with the Secretary of State's office. So in cases where like, you would get a, your license revoked, you have to deal with their court, which is run by all Mothers Against Drunk Driving, and I... From what I hear, it's a real pain in the ass. Um, don't drink and drive. I mean, that's that's all there is to it. But, uh, so, okay, so under Michigan's law, implied consent, if you refuse a breathalyzer, you're going to be charged with a misdemeanor. And then they're going to probably get a court order to take your blood. And if you are drunk, hopefully by the time they take your blood, you won't be. So that's going to be something the officer is going to determine, you know, whether it's worth it. But either way, they're going to get you for a, uh, a misdemeanor. With this new program that they're implementing, as far as um, the drug thing, they've got some type of thing they're going to swab your mouth with to see if you're under the influence of drugs. I have a suspicion this has something to do with the legalization of marijuana that's coming to Michigan soon. Um, but they're saying already that they're going to hit you with a civil infraction. So it's not going to be a misdemeanor, but if you refuse the, the drug uh, swab, you're going to be hit with a misdemeanor. And I was, I've been looking through here just to see what it would cost. Um, let's see, pre preliminary breathalyzer, fail to take that on top of everything else. It's a misdemeanor, and it's a, it's a $225 ticket. Um, so I'm trying to find something similar to what it would be. Uh, for because they don't have it posted yet. This is a brand new thing. Um, but anyway, it can get expensive. You know, it, it can get really expensive. So this is going to be uh, interesting for the state of Michigan. Not only are they implementing this program, they're also apparently implementing uh, DUI checkpoints and uh, roadblocks, whatever you want to call it. So uh, which I'm against because I think it's. Anybody that's uh, busted at a DUI checkpoint um, for drunk driving, uh, I think it's, it's to me it's a no-brainer. It should be thrown out of court because you're you're being entrapped and um, and the stop is unconstitutional to begin with. So, um, if you'd like to know how I feel about drunk drivers, I lost my sister was killed by a drunk driver. So, um, I'm not real big fan of drunk drivers but you know hey the law is the law I'm a big fan of the Constitution so uh, interesting things interesting stuff here we're going to, but like I said I, I really think that uh, this is probably has something to do with I'm pretty sure the state of Michigan is going to uh, legalize marijuana in the next year I would think um, it's already been decriminalized decriminalized in the city of Detroit. Um, I believe you are allowed to have up to one ounce of marijuana on your person in the city of Detroit and it's not, uh, it's decriminalized. So, interesting stuff. I'm just looking through here to see if they've posted uh, anything yet with uh, to do with these uh, drug uh, swab testing, whatever you want to call it, and I don't see anything yet. Like I said, this is 
today is the first day of it, is my understanding. It's going to be in a couple of, they're going to start it in a couple of counties. It is run by the state police, so uh, my assumption is that they'll be able to do it wherever they want to do it. It doesn't matter what county. But, uh, yeah, so any of you that uh, like to smoke weed or, or whatever your, your uh, poison is, Something else to watch out for on the roads. Uh, I mean, in my opinion, you shouldn't be out on the road to begin with, you know. Although, you know, I would have to say that if I had a choice between uh, driving on the road with a drunk driver versus driving on the road with somebody who smoked some marijuana, I will go with the marijuana every time. Um, but, you know, it's just... I'm not a smoker. Um, back in the day, when I was young and, and a young whippersnapper, yeah, I was into that kind of stuff. But uh, I never really got into it. I, I just never really, never, never was a big weed smoker. I don't have a problem with it. Uh, it's not for me, you know. Uh, so yeah, interesting stuff. But these, uh, like I say, these civil infractions can get really expensive, and then. I don't know how they're going to do this as far as, because I see some of these civil infractions, you can, uh, you can, uh, get first, second, third, fourth offenses, which is, uh, pretty interesting. I mean, yeah, the speeding tickets are there, but I would have to imagine that it won't be long that this will be a misdemeanor, which, uh, you know, I mean, I know people say, oh, yeah, it's just a misdemeanor. Well, just a misdemeanor can be a real pain in your ass for a very long period of time. Uh, you know, first and second offense, I think. I know at least the first offense, drunk driving, is a misdemeanor. And I have friends that have drunk drivings, and this misdemeanor can be a major pain in the ass. I've got, I know somebody right now that uh, got busted for drunk driving, refused the breathalyzer, she lost her license for a year, and then now she's got like two years probation, and, uh, and she did some jail time. So, I mean, in that situation, I would have to see if you could work something out with a judge where you could just do jail time and, and get it over with, because... You know, that probation stuff, you know, it sounds good on paper, but the whole problem with the probation is that they want to keep you on paper. Any violation of that probation is going to give you jail time plus more probation. And a lot of times with these uh, these uh, courts, man, they, they're, hey, look, you, you're revenue now. That's what you are. And, you know, nobody wants to lose a paycheck, you know. So that's how they look at it, is, look, once you're off paper, you're no longer contributing. So, you know, be careful out there, guys. I see texting and driving. First offense here in Michigan is $215. Second offense is $315. So disobey traffic signal, impeding traffic, fail to stop. Dun, 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 dun. Mm, doesn't say anything about the PBT is the one that it lists, but that's for drunk driving. That's a $225 fine on top of um, losing your license for a year, as well as you're going to have to go to court for the misdemeanor too. So that's going to cost money. So you know you fail uh, you fail to take a, a breathalyzer. You know you're probably looking at a grand, fifteen hundred bucks, and you're not going to have a license for a year. So. Don't drink and drive. Uh, and coming soon, as of today, don't uh, smoke and drive or, or whatever you're you're taking. Which is going to be interesting for people who take painkillers for legitimate reasons and stuff like that. I wonder uh, how that's going to go down. Anyway, like I said, it's Friday. Just wanted to check in, say hello to everybody. Um, Got some cool things coming on right now, and I think I may have actually wrote a riff that could be a, uh, matter of fact, I know I wrote a riff that could be a number one song, so that'll be coming to this channel soon, as soon as I get it copyrighted. I want to come up with some lyrics for it. I talked with, uh, da -da -da, who was it? Richard Kerbis, the pain finger. We had talked several months ago about um, doing like a YouTube um, collaboration on a song. 
And as a matter of fact, we're going to take some of the old songs that I've got on this channel, and, and what I want to do is redo them, re-record them. And I was thinking of having a few people that I know here on YouTube. You know, we could send each other, and then the the you know the bass line, the guitar line, the vocal line, drum line, send it, and then we could mix it and you know remix the song and put it on the channel. But I don't know. Maybe I'll take this song because it's a really cool riff. Uh, I don't have any lyrics for it. I haven't. I've only written the guitar, and, and I just—it's one of those things that it's just a really catchy, really really catchy riff. So I'm trying to figure out where I'm going with it right now. Maybe that'll be the song that uh, once I copyright the uh, the publishing on it, I'll maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll uh, release it into YouTube, and then you guys can send. Uh, if you guys want to put a bass line on it or a lead guitar line or vo you know vocals, is drums, whatever, maybe we'll all build a song together. So let me know if you guys are interested in doing something like that, you know, in the comment section. So anyway, just wanted to say hello. I uh, hope everybody's doing well. God bless.